History of Egypt under Gamal Abdel Nasser The history of Egypt under Gamal Abdel Nasser covers the period of Egyptian history from the Egyptian Revolution of 1952, of which Gamal Abdel Nasser was one of the two principal leaders, spanning Nasser's presidency of Egypt from 1956 to his death in 1970. On 22 to 26 July 1952, the Free Officers, a group of disaffected officers in the Egyptian army founded by Gamal Abdel Nasser and headed by General Muhammad Nagib, initiated the Egyptian Revolution of 1952 which overthrew King Farouk, whom the military blamed for Egypt's poor performance in the 1948 war with Israel and lack of progress in fighting poverty, disease and illiteracy in Egypt. Finally, on 19 October, Nasser signed a treaty for the evacuation of British troops from Egypt, to be completed over the following 20 months. The original revolutionaries wanted an end to British occupation but did not have a unified ideology or plan for Egypt. The combination of the land reform program and the creation of the public sector in Egypt resulted in around 75% of Egypt's gross domestic product being transferred from the hands of the country's rich either to the state or to millions of small owners. The closest parallel to such a large-scale social program had been in the early days of Mohammed Ali Pasha's rule in the early 19th century. In 1956-1957, 25,000 Jews, almost half of the Jewish population of Egypt, were expelled from the country. The Egyptian propaganda led to riots occurring in Jordan in December, 1955 during a visit of British Field Marshal Templar, who was serving as the British Defence Chief of Staff. The dismissal of Glub took place while the British Foreign Secretary was in Egypt, and the British believed that represented a direct challenge by Nasser to their authority in the region. In a final replay of old European power politics, the British and French negotiated a plan with Israel which would result in the return of the Suez to the British and French, the overthrow of the Nasser regime, and restoration of European, Christian and Jewish property. For although the British and French still had substantial force projection capabilities and were the overwhelming military power in the region, both countries were heavily dependent on American support for their economies through the purchase of British and French debt, American direct investment, and most importantly, through the support American oil companies provided for European consumption. When the American anger at the British and French intervention was felt at Whitehall, the British government fractured between those who saw the futility of maintaining the British Empire, those who saw the potential threat the Americans posed to the overall British economy should they end financial support of the British economy, and those British interests which still saw a need, a necessity and a reason for maintaining the British Empire, a 466 for 59.